Yes, yes, yes. I know this movie is trash. The plot, the number of villains, and the everything. But I love it. I love this movie so much. It means a lot to me. I remember being 10 years old-ish and arguing with my sister about how Gwen Stacy dies. If it was whiplash or if her head hit the ground. I was right the other way, uh, her head hit the ground. Anyway, I'm saying that this movie is a bit sentimental to me. When I first watched this when I was younger, I didn't understand plot, exposition, and basically what's needed to make a good film. I saw cool fights and cool villains, which made me love this movie. Which is why I still love this movie. It's just so fun to watch. It's all about opinion, really. If you're into Blue Electro and the dubstep, if you're into a big mechanical rhino, then you can easily watch this movie and not give two shits about the bad parts. Because trust me, there are a lot of bad parts. But there are good parts. For example, the acting, the freaking visuals, and the godly soundtrack that Hans Zimmer made, which uh, kind of made my ears orgasm. So yeah, welcome to my first video essay, where I will tell you why I love this movie, and go really freaking in depth, because I'm a movie nerd. So yeah, enjoy people. So the movie begins with a cool shot of Peter's dad's watch, which kind of foreshadows Gwen's death, and shows the main aspect of the movie, which is time. You will see what I mean when I mention it more in this video. So pretty much Peter's dad needs to run away from the world so that Oscorp can't use his research for naughty things. He gets on a plane with his wife Mary Parker and turns out that the pilot, or whoever this guy is, is actually an assassin there to kill them. That's all you really need to know about Peter's parents, because who cares? And that is definitely one of the bad parts about this movie, is that who cares about Peter's parents? They, they don't need to be such a huge part of it. It just feels so goddamn unnecessary to bring in Peter's parents to the Spider-Man universe. So yeah, big assassin man shoots the wife and the plane crashes. Cool. Then we get into the best part of the entire movie, probably my favourite scene in any movie, excluding The Dark Knight. The first shot of Spider-Man. Now I don't care who you are, watch this and tell me it's not good. I dare you. That, with the score from Hans Zimmer, and the best on-screen Spider-Man suit, just makes this spectacular. The visuals are so good as well. Look at this guy swing. Ah, oh, my brain cells. This shot where he's next to a Daily Bugle news helicopter made my 10-year-old brain in 2014 go mad. I mean, just, just look at that. So pretty much Spider-Man is trying to stop soon-to-be Rhino from killing a bunch of people and some orange Oscorp stuff from being stolen. You also see Spider save a future Electro, but I'm not going to go into that yet. There is this jaw-dropping moment when Spider-Man saves a bus full of people from dying in slow motion. Some small brain person might think this is stupid because, ooh, Spider-Man doesn't have powers to move in slow motion. But if you're super smart like me, then you can see that this is an amazing visual representation of his spider sense and how fast his reflexes are compared to normal people. So Spider-Man saves everyone and does this to the rhino. I'll take that. That's not your one. Huh? This is not end, Spider! All of this is happening while Gwen is giving her speech and Peter gets there just in time to do a cool Spidey kiss and get a cheeky Stanley cameo. I think I know that guy. Oh, and uh, Andrew Garfield and Emma Stone kill it in this movie. Their, their on-screen chemistry is just on point. I'll give this movie's visuals a solid 9 out of 10, but some of the editing is so bad. I'm going to show you a couple moments where this movie shows them talking, but their mouth is not moving. I'm um, trying to kill my... Yes, take just my give me up! No, 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 I can't come in! Stay outside, I'm so naked, it's just... Peter! <laughs> How am I gonna stop him? Every time I get close to him, he fries my web shooters. Every time I get close to him, fries my web shooters. What? Anyway, Peter keeps seeing Gwen's dad from the first movie, and he doesn't want to be with Gwen to protect her. So they break up, and he kind of stalks her. But then we get a great montage of Spider-Man literally just being Spider-Man. As you can tell, this video is a bit all over the place, but it's my first time doing a video essay, so just cut me some slack, okay? We get this scene that shows Max slash Electra on his birthday, and he's gone a bit crazy because Spider-Man saved him one time. He starts hearing voices, sometimes in music, and he's pretty much just a Spidey fanboy, which is, a uh, kind of relatable. Oh, and another thing, all of Peter and Aunt May's scenes in this movie are perfect. The acting is 
great and their relationship is built very well. Max goes to Oscorp and no one cares that it's his birthday, big sad. He also sees Gwen in an elevator and tells her how much he likes Spider-Man, which uh, kind of makes her a bit jealous. Okay, now we get, ugh, the Osborns. I'm gonna try and get through this as fast as possible because it's easily the worst part of the movie. Norman Osborn is dying of, wait, 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 the Osborn curse. Ugh. He tells Harry about it and makes him scared that he's going to end up like daddy. So then Norman dies, who cares? I do like the casting choice for Harry, I really do. But this movie's version of Harry slash Goblin is literally just a plot device to kill Gwen. He gets like zero decent character development and only turns into the Goblin in the last 15 minutes. Which is why I hate the whole Osborn stuff in this movie. Then we watch Max turn to Electro by falling into a vat of electric eels. I quite like this scene. The whole teeth gap fixing thing is kind of dumb, but easily overlooked if you're watching for fun. Which I highly recommend because if you watch this movie seriously, you're going to want to kill yourself. But yeah, let's talk about him being blue. I like it. I know that it's controversial because it's not in the comics, but it's not like they can just give this guy a yellow mask. This movie is a realistic version of Spider-Man, and having Jamie Foxx with a yellow mask and a green suit would just look pretty dumb, in my opinion. So yeah, I approve of the blue Electro. You can roast me in the comments all you want. So then Peter and Harry catch up. We get a hint at Black Cat, yada, yada, yada. Oscorp wants to cover up Electro's eel accident and blame it on Harry later in the movie. The whole Oscorp trying to frame Harry plot isn't that bad, but you can tell it's only there as a way for him to become the Green Goblino. Okay, next. Now we can talk about some of the cool stuff rather than shitty Oscorp. So Gwen and Peter meet up again, and you can clearly tell that they're dating in real life. Their chemistry is on point, 10 out of 10. You can almost hear Mark Webb, the director, saying, Right, 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 Emma, Andrew, just act like you're going on a date for about four minutes, and then this movie will continue. Thank you. But the relationship cuteness is interrupted by a certain blue man. You guessed it, it's Electra. So this whole scene is just Electra finding out his powers and then getting big angry at Spider-Man. And I love it. The way Electra says this. <laughs> literally makes my eyes water. Let's talk about Electra's dubstep for a second. I like it. I know I like Electro and I shouldn't, but I feel like the dubstep works for him. You'll see what I mean at the final fight. So yeah, Electro is like, I said stoop, and then sends some cars flying. Cool. But Spider-Man swings in and saves this cop and just says an actual funny line. Glad you're not one of those cops that rides a horse. Another thing, listen to the way that Electro's music is cut and interrupted by Spider-Man's. It's very cool. <laughs> So Spider-Man and Electro talk, and Electro fries his web shooters, and then we get this amazing scene of Spider-Man saving people from electricity on the stairs of Times Square. I mean, j just look at this. J just look. Then this happens. Next we get a cool Spider-Man doing detective work scene with a great song playing in the background. And I will do it for you. For you. Baby, I'm not moving on. I love you long after you're gone. Harry finds out about the cover-up of Max Dillon and we get a little Morbius reference, which you think I wouldn't see it. Hmm? Then we get Peter trying to upgrade his web shooter so they don't get fried by Jamie Foxx again. Harry calls him and is like, Pit, Pit, Pitter. I'm dying. Eh. So Peter goes to see Harry and Harry tells him that he is dying and the only thing that can save him is Spider-Man's blood. And Harry thinks that Peter knows Spider-Man because he took a photo of him from far away. You took his picture, so you know him. What the f- How dumb is Harry? I just want to say this movie would have been so much better if it was just Electro versus Spider-Man. But no, Sony needs a reason to kill Gwen, so the goblin is here. Ugh. Then this weird doctor tortures Electro and we see him say his name for the first time. Aunt May finds Peter's wall and tells the story of his dad. Spider-Man goes to visit Harry and is like, my blood is mine, thank you very much. We just need a bit more time to I figure out something else. Time. <laughs> this movie keeps reminding us that time is important. Wonder why, hmm? You're a fraud, Spider-Man! <laughs> So then Peter finds his dad's secret research train and Peter finds out that the human DNA in the spider he was bit with was his dad's. 
In my opinion, this was unnecessary because the point of Peter Parker becoming Spider-Man is that it could happen to anyone. He's just a normal kid. Not that he is, like, the chosen one. So then Harry breaks Electro out of prison so they can go hunt Spider-Man together. Kinda. Damn, let's go catch a spider. But damn, these visuals on Mr. Blue Man are quite sexy. Oh yeah, and Electro does this. Revenge, I guess? So the deal was that Electro got the power grid to kill Spidey and Harry gets taken to the spider venom. So he gets injected with the venom and we get some cool horror looking transformation shit and now he is a goblin. Cool. So now that the villains are all set up, we get Gwen and Peter's moment on the bridge and it's uh, pretty wholesome, not gonna lie. I especially like this line. We've all gotta make a choice. Right? Why choose you? Oh, and I forgot a taxi driver says the funniest line in the entire movie. Stop the cab. Lady, I ain't even moving. But for the second time in this movie, no complaints, Peter and Gwen's moment gets interrupted by Electra. And... Oh my god! Okay, it's happening! Everybody stay calm! What's the Everybody procedure, calm. everyone? What's the procedure? Stay calm! What? The final boss fight is finally happening. I'm gonna show you all the amazing parts of this fight scene. Ready, set, go. Now here is the bad part, while all of this is going on, this movie expects us to care about two subplots. Electra cuts the city's power so we have to worry about this plane not crashing into another plane, Aunt May's hospital with the lights off, when the goblin's gonna show up because he's been teased to us now. It's just too much, we don't need three things to worry about while Spider-Man is fighting the main villain. Just give us the Electro fight scene and end the movie with Gwen's death. But yeah, the fight is beautiful, we get some Electro vomit, the fight ends well with Electro overcharging and Gwen helping. And then, when you're like, damn, that was a pretty cool scene, I enjoyed this movie, you hear this. Then we can still make your fight! <laughs> Gwen, stay there. And you're like, oh, I forgot about him. It's because he's so insignificant. So Goblin Man takes Gwen and Spidey and Goblin fight while Spidey tries to hold on to Gwen. This also relates to time because Spider-Man is literally trying to save Gwen by stopping time. Because they're in a clock tower. But, uh, that doesn't really work. I mean, look at this web hand. It got me pretty emotional. And then the acting on her death was actually really good. Well done, Andrew Garfield. So now Peter is sad because his girlfriend is dead and he stops being Spider-Man for a few months. Then Peter... Watches her speech and is perfectly fine being Spider-Man again. Wow, that was quick. So we then get a Sinister Six teaser and a pretty cool Rhino moment. Let's talk about the Rhino scene. I love it. The kid stepping in, the mechanical suit, the Spider-Man. But of course, 
They ruin every good thing in this movie, somehow. And in this scene, they ruin it by ending the movie like this. <laughs> <sighs> well, now the movie is over, let me tell you what really happened. Summarised. A really good director named Mark Webb had a really good vision about how to make a good Spider-Man movie. But that vision was ruined because Sony was breathing down his neck and wouldn't let him make a good Spider-Man film. But yeah, that's it. I love this movie because it's fun. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, I really hope you enjoyed it. This is probably the most effort put into any video in my entire life, so it'd be in the world if you could uh, like, subscribe, maybe share even. But yeah, I put a lot of effort into writing this, editing this, so thank you for watching, and I'll leave you with this. Subscribe.